Okay, so let's take a closer look uh, inside the can. Uh, so let's start with the, uh, well, maybe we start with the can itself. So here is the, the core, which we call the port. Now, uh, inside the port, uh, there's a bright side model reader, uh, which contains channels. So uh, the field sort can flow through these channels while being moderated uh, by the graphite. Uh, of the, the pod, um, in next week's uh, workshop, we'll probably be able to do something on that. Uh, we're still working on that. That's, I think um, sometimes people have got a frustrated uh, why we're not showing uh, what inside the pod freely uh, because that was actually restricted by uh, the uh, the U.S. export control, uh, which is very uh, annoying. Um, but we have to follow that. Uh, we're working actively to uh, confirm what information we can share with the the general public. And we had some information uh, on our website on SoCom's website. I know. Uh, a lot of experts was able to uh, conduct some analysis based on those uh, published information. And those information are, are not up to date. Um, so we're trying to uh, release as much uh, up, to, up to date information as possible so people can uh, all uh, work on that. But hopefully um, by uh, next Friday, we'll be able to have a, a better picture on what information can be made available. So uh, the, the sort flows uh, upward in the port. It's pumped into the pump here. Uh, it, the pump is right here. And you can see on top, there's a disk, uh, what we call the a header tank. Um, and the sort is then pumped to the heat exchanger uh, through the shell side, the heat exchanger. And let's go back, if you can see the, the uh, pipe here, I'll go back all the way back to uh, the pot and then and keep circulating during the normal operation. Um, so on top of the pot, you can see several tanks. So uh, this one is what we call off-gas uh, re recuperator. Uh, what it work, how it works is that um, the molten salt reactor always have, have a gas. So in, in our case, we're using helium. Helium is very good gas because it, it, it cannot be activated. So it's not a radioactive. And also it's uh, easier to separate uh, the venom and krypton from helium. If we use argon, uh, the argon will be activated, be radioactive, and also it's hard to separate from other fission gases. So uh, let's say we have this uh, uh, cava gas here. So the cava gas will be, uh, will flow uh, into the off gas recuperator. It's basically just tanks and the cava gas stay there for some time, decay there and release heat. And what's important is the heat is released inside the can. So uh, once the cava gas uh, uh, stayed long enough, it will be, uh, uh, it will flow out of the recuperator to uh, some other uh, off-gas uh, managing, managing devices outside the can. Uh, the gas is already cooled down, so it's much easier to handle uh, those uh, those gases. Um, there's a off-gas hold up tank, which we have just seen a few slides early, and those those cans are much bigger and will hold. Uh, the off gas from here. Um, and then on this side, we will, we, we have the makeup fuel tank um, because uh, we're using liquid fuel. So we have the luxury of continuously adding extra fissile material uh, to the, to the core. So we don't need to have a excessive reactivity and so we don't need to have those uh, mechanism to uh, compensate those uh, excess, excessive reactivity. What we do is whenever we need uh, some extra 
a fissile material, we just uh, uh, push some sort from the makeup fuel tank into the core. But what about the fuel that's already in the uh, in the port? We have to push out some of the old fuel, right? So the, 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 the old fuel will be pushed out from the pump and header tank and all the way back to the fuel drain tank. So, uh, and then we also have sorin tank, which allow us to add sorin uh, into, into the core. So here's basically the top. Oh, there's a, a, a two valves as you can see here. Uh, that, that is the uh, secondary loop. So secondary loop has to flow into the can uh, in the tube side of the heat exchanger uh, to transfer the heat. But whenever we have to say replace the whole can, uh, we cut off the uh, valve here and we remove all this uh, can in the hole. Um, so here's actually the can um, in, in red and the can is the, uh, the boundary, is the, the barrier against the radioactive material release. Um, so you can see uh, it completely surrounds the, uh, the pod, primary heat exchanger, uh, the pump, and several of the, uh, of the tanks here. And underneath uh, the primary loop, there's a, a freeze valve. And I don't know if you can see it clearly, but there should be four uh, freeze valve in parallel. So any, I mean, uh, we only need one freeze valve to be functional. Um, so the, the function of the freeze valve is that you can drain all the uh, fuel salt into uh, the drain tanks. So while we're draining it, uh, first of all, uh, during the normal operation, when you want to replace the can, uh, you want to first uh, drain the, the fuel source so you, you can actively uh, open the freeze valve. What the freeze valve works is that uh, you supply cold, um, you supply cooling to the freeze valve, uh, so the sort will become solid. Uh, it, it, it will form a, uh, a shut out valve by itself. But once you remove the, the cooling, uh, the, the heat of the fuel soil will melt and then will flow into uh, the, the fuel drink tanks. And also uh, during the emergency, if ever you wanna uh, drink the salt, uh, you can just cut off the power and the, the heat uh, will just melt the salted part and, and the, the, the salt will be drained into uh, the fuel drink tank by gravity. So there's a, you need a power to keep the freeze valve uh, freezing, but you don't need the power to melt it. You don't need the power to drain it. it it's, it's completely passive. Um, so you can see the fuel sort drink tank is connected to the can. So when you replace a can, you will replace uh, the fuel drink tanks as well. Um, all this can and fuel drink tanks are surrounded by uh, the cold war, which, which is also the, uh, the can silo, which is double war, um, and the water is filled inside, and the water is uh, circulated naturally uh, to remove the heat. Uh, so that's especially important when we lost the power. And when we lost the power, the fuel, uh, the freeze valve will open and all the salt will be uh, drained into the fuel drink tank. Um, and then this will be, the fuel drink tank will be cooled by the cold water uh, naturally, uh, by the natural circulation of water. Okay, so when you, when you replace the, uh, the can and the, fuel, and the fuel salt drink tank, you won't replace the, uh, the cold water. The cold water stays uh, with the power plant. Okay, so here's a, uh, just a explanation on how the primary loop and fuel cell tanks works. If you look at the number, uh, the output for each of the, uh, the pot is about 557 megawatt thermal. And here's the 
uh, a few sort which you have which we have uh, sodium fluoride beryllium fluoride zirconium fluoride uranium and sodium fluoride the reason we're adding the zirconium fluoride is uh, to uh, reduce the corrosion and um, and to prevent uranium from um, forming uranium oxides uh, our enrichment is uh, 17.75 percent of uranium-235 and the moderator is uh, graphite the structure material is stainless steel uh, here's outlet temperature inlet temperature and um, the fuel bo boiling temperature is uh, it's about 1400 now i'm using uh, this approximate uh, number because uh, as you can imagine uh, during the operation uh, when the burn up changes the uh, the fuel salt will change. You'll have more efficient products actinide at the end of the cycle. Uh, so that means the uh, the salt properties, including the boiling temperature, will uh, change slightly over the time. So it's about this number. Um, and then the fuel liquid earth temperature is around 500. So, but either way, you see there's a big uh, margin between the normal operating temperature and boiling temperature. Uh, and there's also some margin between the lower lowest operating temperature and the uh, the liquid temperature. So we got the margins here. Now uh, the operating time at this moment for the can and fuel drink can uh, is four years. So every four years we will replace uh, the can with the fuel salt drink can. Um, the fuel salt, however, can operate longer. Uh, it could be eight years. So we're not re replacing the fuel salt every four years. And exactly how we optimize that, uh, we can still uh, keep doing that. And uh, maybe we can have a longer fuel salt uh, lifetime. Okay. 